हेलो व्यूअर्स दिस इज शोमैन फ्रॉम ऑयल एंड गैस फील्ड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग विथ ए सेंसिटिव सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज अ रियल इश्यू फॉर द वेल्डर्स व्हेन दे फाइंड मैग्नेटिज्म इन द पाइप व्हिच इज इफेक्टिंग द वेल्डिंग समटाइम इफ द मैग्नेटिज्म इज टू मच वी नीड टू इवन स्टॉप द वेल्डिंग बिकॉज द मैग्नेटिज्म इन द पाइप दैट attracts the welding arc towards magnetism and then the welding arc is erratic and beyond the control of the welder so let us discuss how it affects the welding why it is caused what are the remedies all this subject step by step let us start magnetism in pipes can stop the welding process due to magnetic arc blow This may result in poor quality of welding and usually occurs if the material being welded has residual magnetism. This sometimes is referred to as the wander. For welders on the job, it is important to understand how much residual magnetism can be tolerated and if the magnetism is too high, how to manage the problem. Arc blow can stop a job dead in its tracks. No good welds, so no progress this can be incredibly frustrating to the welders resulting costly project delays here we will be discuss this phenomena of magnetic arc blow its causes and how to overcome it after deflection or extinction away from the point of the welding due to magnetism is generally referred to as magnetic arc blow This may result in poor quality welding and usually occurs in the material being welded has residual magnetism. I told you before the effect occurs because the interaction between welding arcs magnetism field and residual magnetism field. What causes magnetism in the welding? Magnetism results in magnetic arc blow that phenomena that occurs during direct current welding. where the arc pulls to one side of the well joint during the root pass specially the deviation of the arc often can be severe and cause well defects that will need to be repaired how to demagnetize a pipe before welding so this magnetism is affecting the pipe the remedy is very simple during the welding if the pipe is demagnetized enough then the welder can weld easily you can demagnetize a piece or pipe by magnetizing it with ac alternating current the secret of demagnetizing a work piece is to remagnetize it with a field that is stronger than the residual magnetic field that is giving you the problem so we are generally doing it practically in the site by wrapping welding cables from a welding machine and let's say start with 10 wraps of welding lead and then uh, we run the welding machine which will induce a mag- magnetism on the already magnetized pi- pipe so this magnetism will help to demagnetize the pipe during the welding if you stop the welding machine the residual magnetism of the pipe will come back magnetic limits so what is the limit that will affect a welding Many options that have been expressed about the maximum tolerable level of residual magnetism and how to measure it. A paper based on a study by Newport News Shipbuilding suggested that about 40 gauss, you know the gauss is the unit of measuring magnetism, at about 40 gauss the welding arc can become unstable and even in some cases arc blow out. it also suggested that 40 gauss could be tolerated if certain procedures were followed for instance balancing the residual magnetism level in the adjacent pipe end i would suggest maximum allowable residual magnetism should be much lower between 5 to 7 gauss the less magnetism of course the easier it to be welded so the ideal is to get that the level down to zero residual magnetism is in excess of 40 gauss is not uncommon in line pipe let's say one figure i i am showing you is a 24 inch pipe being prepared for welding 
the steel parts hanging from the pipe indicate the residual magnetism field that made it impractical to weld. The residual magnetism reported by the operator was 50 Gauss with the Gauss meter two feet from the end of the pipe. This is an unusually high level of magnetism. There were many cases of residual magnetism in pipes and the level can vary widely. There also does not appear to be any practical way of preventing the magnetism of pipes in normal course of pipe manufacturing, coating and handling. From my experience, I have seen residual magnetism while welding a live tie-in. When we empty one live pipeline, we purge everything when it is safe to weld and during fit up we started finding even sometime it doesn't allow us to make attack welding so the easiest way as i told you in just two minutes before we are wrapping around the ac welding machine power cable 10 wrap 20 wrap or the full cable lot until and unless the induced magnetism is more than the residual magnetism then only the welder can start welding how to measure? Electronic devices based on Hall effect principle are the most widely common technology for measuring residual magnetism. The output voltage of a Hall effect sensor is directly proportional to the magnetic field strain through it. It's often assumed that digital devices are better than analog one, but in pipeline magnetism measurement, they are more difficult to use. Purpose-built magnetometers have been developed to make it easier to measure residual magnetism in the field. These Gauss meters are very effective and take only minutes to train an operator how to use it appropriately. As a precaution, the meters should be brought toward the end of the pipe from a distance to avoid possible damage to the meter caused by a high field level of magnetism. Managing the magnetics. If measurement suggests that it is possible to weld without further demagnetization, there are a few ways in which to manage the weld process. One approach is to use a lower arc voltage and the lower practical current for the joint in question. When the voltage is changed, then arc blow is counteracted by the force of the arc. Changing the welding current, of course, could require a reduction in arc speed. Another option could be use an alternative current for demagnetization, but this has limited application due to the skin effect of the alternating current. Skin effect is the tendency of AC to be distributed such that the current density is greatest near the surface of the conductor and decreases exponentially with greater depth. That means the current will be uh, more at the surface level where we are rolling the cable but if the thickness is more in the root area this demagnetization effect is gradually decreases use of appropriately pulse direct current or dc machine on the other hand demagnetizes the entire thickness and the pipe then stays demagnetized for an extended period of time so better to use a dc welding machine cables other than the ac Eliminating the magnetic, one common method that I have used on pipeline in the oil and gas industry to create a magnetic coil. I wrap the lead around the pipe three to six times, about half of the pipe diameter away from the well group on the opposite side from the direction of the arc blow pull. So guys, this was some practical experience I shared with you, some information collected from Google, of course, but this is a practical nuisance for the welders. I basically faced it while welding some final time with the existing pipeline. Our new pipe has no magnetism, so arc was always attracted by the live line and welder could not even weld the root. Sometimes it is blows off the arc, as I said before. So it is a practical problem which can be only eliminated by wrapping the welding cables as sight. No extra devices generally being used by the pipeline contractors to eliminate this. Okay, if you like my way of training and the topics I'm discussing, please share it to your friends so that more subscribers will inspire me more. Thank you. Shining off. Showman.